I know, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. For I know, I know, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Plans to prosper you hey! and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope, hope and the future. Plans to prosper you hey! and not to harm. church for our all age service today we're going to be talking about God's guidance and God's plan for our life and in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 it says this for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future see guys God says, I've given you this book, which is the Bible and the Holy Spirit, which lives inside us to guide us in our life. And that's all we need. We all need to know that God's plan for our life. We all need to know what that is. Every one of us needs God's guidance. We really need to know how God can guide us in our life and what plans he has for us in our life. And I'd like to try and illustrate that today with, with these balloons. And I've got, I've got some uh, a straw here with some sellotape on. See, I want you to understand that, that our life is sometimes, it's like a balloon. We all need guidance. So sometimes, you know, we're so full of ourselves and, and we look to ourselves for our own guidance and for the plan that we have for our own lives. We're not looking anywhere else. So I'm going to blow up this balloon. See, now a lot of times in life, we're like this balloon, trying to hit our target, trying to reach our goal. But we have no plan. We have no guidance. And we fail miserably in life, trying to reach our purpose in life. Just like this. It just goes everywhere. It's hit and miss. Sometimes the plan works, sometimes it doesn't. And that's, and that's what our life is like, because we're relying on our own plan and our own guidance. So let me blow up another balloon. OK. And see if I can reach my goal and reach my plan. And, I'm, and this time, Ella's going to be my target. Ella's going to be my goal. And I'm going to try and reach my target. I'm only using myself and I'm only using my plan and nothing else. I'm never going to reach that goal, am I? I'm never going to reach that target. It's hit and miss. We're never going to reach it without using God's ultimate plan. And that's just the way it is. So what we need is a guidance system, a plan, and that's what God has given us. See, he's given us a plan. He's given us a guidance system, and that's the Bible. 
It's how to live and how to treat other people. And he's also given us the Holy Spirit, which is our internal guidance system. But it all comes from God. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to create my own guidance system. I'm going to try and reach God's plan in, our, in my life. Let's see if we can reach a goal with our new guidance system to try and reach Ella. So I'll blow up my balloon again. And what I'll do is I'll put it, I've got my straw, and I'm going to stick it to the balloon. So that's the difference, see? See, is when we're trying to find guidance and trying to find our own plan, we never achieve that mark. We never achieve that goal, what we're trying to accomplish in life. But when we rely on God's plan, I'll just turn that around the other way. When we rely on God's plan, it works, see? When we rely on the Holy Spirit, it works when you're trying to achieve your plan. So here we go. See, it's straight to Why? Because we're relying on God. We're not relying on ourselves. That's when the scripture of Jeremiah 29, 11 comes into play. See, God says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a, a hope and a future. We have to put our trust in God that he has a better plan for us than we do. We have to have faith to believe that our heavenly father, who gave up his one and only son, Jesus, wants to give us good gifts. He never said it wouldn't, we wouldn't face trials or, or tests, but he guides us through those storms. And we come out the other side stronger, stronger than before, with a testimony about his love for us. See, that wasn't my guidance system. I just put some, uh, some sellotape on a straw and, and it just went straight to Ella. Because all what we've got to do is just rely on God. And we rely on God, as I've said, is through the Bible and through his Holy Spirit. So, guys, thanks very much for listening to me today and we'll see you next week. Goodbye from me and goodbye from Ella. Goodbye. Happy New Year. Hey, guys, it's me again, Douglas. And hey, Happy New Year. Yeah, I always think New Year is kind of interesting because I, I love New Year because it always feels like like a great time for a new start. But it's also kind of weird, you know, because there isn't really much of a difference between December 31st of one year and then January 1st of the next year. But still, I always do like New Year's because it feels anyways like it's a good opportunity to start something new. You know, for some people, they have like a New Year's resolution where they say, I'm going to do this thing in the new year. Or they say, you know, this is going to be the year that I do such and such. And for some people, they're just excited to be out of the year that they were in. You know, it's like they say, last year was terrible, but this year is going to be a good year. And today, I just really wanted to encourage you guys with the fact that it is never too late for a fresh start. Never, ever. So I've got this friend at school that I've known for a long time, and, and he's always been nice to me. But, but there was a time a, a while ago where he was doing a lot of really bad stuff. He was getting in trouble a lot for some, you know, pretty serious things and i was talking to him and this was probably probably a couple years ago but i was talking to him and inviting him to my church and and sharing the gospel with him you know telling him that that all of us have sinned and and jesus died to save us from our sins so that we can live with him forever so we can have eternal life he was like yeah this is really great i, I i'm really excited about this you know maybe we can come to your church because i really want this for my little sister and i told him well this is for you too and he said oh no douglas i i've done way too much bad stuff and maybe you feel like my friend did. Maybe you feel like you have done too much for Jesus to save you. Too much for God to love you. Well, let me tell you what I told him. There is nothing that you can do that will make God not love you. God loves you so, so much. And there is nothing that you can do that is so big or so bad that it cannot be paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you might be saying, oh no, Douglas, you don't understand. I've done something really bad. I've done lots of really bad things. 
you know what? The Bible is filled with people who have done terrible things but are definitely in heaven with God right now. You know, King David, one of the greatest heroes in all of the Old Testament, he had a man killed so that he could steal that man's wife. That's pretty messed up. And the Apostle Paul, you know, he wrote a ton of the New Testament. He used to be named Saul, and Saul hunted Christians. He hunted them. He tracked them down to throw them in prison. He was like one of the greatest enemies of Jesus Christ at the time. So no, it is never too late for you to start fresh. If you believe in Jesus Christ to save you from your sins, he will. And the Bible says that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And so if you've never believed in Jesus Christ as your Savior, I really hope that you will. It's never too late. But if you have believed in Jesus Christ, if you are a Christian, I want to share some encouragement with you too. Because here's the thing. I, I know a lot of Christians who are scared right now. They're afraid because they think there is no second chance for them. Or maybe a second second chance, like a third chance or a fourth chance or a fifth chance. You know, in the book of Hebrews, it, it talks about how Jesus died for us and how by that one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy, those who are being sanctified. That means that if you believe in Jesus Christ, then God no longer sees your sin, not your past sin, not your present sin, not your future sin. You have been made perfect forever in God's eyes. Even if you mess up, through the power of Jesus Christ, he is making you holy. You are perfect in God's sight, and you are being made holy. If you've messed up, do not believe the lie that you're done. Get back up. Keep running the race laid out for you. And you might be saying, well, Douglas, if someone has fallen away, it's impossible for them to come back to God. And I would say, maybe with man it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. You know, in the story of the prodigal son, he messed up big time. He was in his father's household. He had it all. And then he left and messed everything up. And when he came back, he came back to a loving father with open arms. And so if you've messed up, I'm not going to lie to you. That's not good. I'm not going to say it was a good thing to mess up. But I am going to say, don't give up. Satan wants more than anything for you to just surrender. To say, well, I messed up and so that's that. No. It's not. Your new beginning can start today, right now. It's never too late for a new beginning. It's never too late for a fresh start. So my challenge to you guys today is that if you have never believed in Jesus and you're, you're not convinced by this video, but you're curious that you would, you know, look it up in scripture. The book of John is a great place to look. Or you could talk to somebody that you know who believes in Jesus. I'm sure they would love, love to walk you through it. And if you are a believer and you have sinned, which we all have. If anyone believes that he's without sin, he deceives himself. If you are a believer and you've messed up and you feel like, like that's it for you, don't give up. It's not the end. Jesus' sacrifice is enough. It's never too late for new beginnings. It's never too late to get back up and try again. With God, all things are possible. Don't give up.
in Christ. He is a new creation. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new Now I want you to listen very, very carefully. This is why we do Kids Club. We have four reasons why we do this. First reason is to love God first. Second reason, learn His Word. Number three, lead others to Jesus. And number four, live right every day. Mandy. It certainly hasn't, Norm. No, because we couldn't have a New Year party or anything to celebrate, could we? No, no, we didn't even get to have any hugs or anything, did we, oh, Norm? No, and I've missed hugs with you and my grandma. Let me have a virtual hug, Miss Mandy. Ooh. Oh. Mm. oh, that's so <sighs> nice. I, I didn't ask for a kiss, though. Yes. Oh, but I gave you one. Is that okay? Yeah, Norm? yes, that's okay. But do you know what? We we made some New Year's revolutions we did on Christmas. Oh, not Christmas. New Year's Eve. My <laughs> mum says she, she's going to stop getting fat and get fit. So I said, I want to get fit. I'm not fat. So I'm going to do 300 press-ups every single day so that by next Christmas, I'm going to be a big Strong boy. <laughs> Norm, 300 press-ups every day yes. just so that you can get big yes. and strong. Yes. I, I just, I think that might be a little bit unrealistic, Norm. Oh, I don't think, are you making any New Year's revolutions, Miss Mandy? I am making a New Year's resolution, Norm. 
Okay. In fact, Mr. Nigel and I are going to be leading a new church norm. What? Pastor Mandy and Pastor Nigel? <laughs> wow. Oh. Yes. So, so Norm, we're having to make some, some New Year's resolutions to help us to do that. And so we're, we're going to be spending more time in our Bible and reading the Bible. What, jumping into it like that? Oh, yeah, jumping Bible. into it like, like getting, yeah, getting really deep into it. Ah. Um, so, and we're going to spend more time praying as well. Okay, yeah. And we're going to spend more time loving and helping people. What? But how is that going to make you fit, Miss Mandy? Because you won't have big, strong arms like me. I won't need big, strong arms, Norm, because what will happen is my, my heart and my soul will be fit because of reading God's word and praying and caring for others and loving others. So that, that will make me so fit, Lord, um, Norm. <laughs> did you nearly call me Lord? <laughs> I did, <laughs> Norm. Did you hear me? <laughs> I, I, I think that means you're getting very holy already. I think I want to do that, Miss Mandy. I don't think I'll be good oh, at Oh, Norm, being... do you know... What? Um, can I let you into a little secret? I think if you could do that for yes. the next year, reading your Bible, uh -huh. praying more, yes. and being I, I, kind I, and I, loving I could, others. I, I could be past norm. You could be past norm, but do you know yes. what, Norm? Wow. You will be spiritually healthy and spiritually fit. Wow. And that would make me really good to be able to tell all my friends about Jesus and, and I could do them in the playground and make a difference to Colchester, couldn't I? Oh. You could make a huge difference, Norm. I think, Miss Mandy, I'm going to go and read my Bible now and start praying. Yes. So read your Bible, pray and be kind and love others, Norm. Ah, okay. Thank you, Miss Mandy. You are so, oh, sorry, Pastor Mandy. You are so <laughs> wise. Love you. I said love, love you. Love you, Norm. Bye. 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 Love you, Norm. Bye. Bye. Heavenly Father, thank you for the year that we have just finished. Please help all the people that are ill with COVID. Let them know you can heal them. Thank you for 2021. We pray that things get better. We know you have a plan for us that brings hope and a future. Protect us all this year. Amen.